Hello and welcome back to a new video on the channel. And this one here is about the important Banach fixed point theorem. It's a general result which is often used in analysis. For example, I use it here in my ordinary differential equations course to show uniqueness of solutions under some conditions. And it is also used in other courses, therefore it's useful to have such a separate video about this theorem. And here I will talk about the statement and I will show you the proof of the Banner fixed point theorem. However, before we start, I really want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. Only because of your support, I am able to make such math videos here. And as a supporter, you get a lot of additional material, just click the link in the description. With that said, let's start with the Banner fixed point theorem and I can already tell you, we need two key elements for it. The first thing is a complete metric space we can call X. More precisely, we should say we have a pair XD, which is a metric space and it is also complete. If you have never seen that, I can appease you because it's not complicated at all. We just have a set X and a metric D, which means we can measure distances inside the set X with this distance function D. So if you have two points, X and X tilde, you know what the distance between them is. And indeed, it's always a positive real number and only in the case that x and x tilde are equal, we have the distance zero. And this is important to remember, this is the only case where the distance is allowed to be zero. For all other cases, as I said, it's a positive real number. Moreover, we also have two additional natural properties for this distance function. On the one hand, we have a symmetry, so it does not matter if we measure from x to x tilde or from x tilde to x. And on the other hand, we have the famous triangle inequality, which means when we go a detour, the distance will not get smaller. Okay, so this is a metric space in a nutshell, and now you know, we can measure distances in the set x. Which means we can consider sequences and terms like convergence and Cauchy sequences make sense. And therefore completeness here means exactly the same as for real numbers. It simply says that all possible Cauchy sequences are actually convergent sequences. Indeed, often we simply say that completeness means that there are no holes in the space. Okay, so this is the first ingredient of the Banner fixed point theorem and now we can go to the second one. There we take a map phi from x to x. So not so complicated, phi simply maps x into itself again. However, this is not all, we also want that phi is a so-called contraction. So it's a map that contracts the inputs. In the picture here on the right, we could visualize that, that the images of x and x tilde lie here respectively. And now the property contraction should definitely include that the distance between the two images is smaller than the original distance. In other words, the points should get closer to each other. But obviously, we have to formulate this property in correct mathematical terms. And we do that by saying that we have a contraction constant Q that describes how much closer the two points are after applying the map phi. And therefore this Q has to be strictly less than 1. And then we can write that for all possible inputs x and x tilde we can measure the distance of the images. Hence in the function d we have phi of x and phi of x tilde. And now this should be definitely less or equal than q times the original distance. This means we simply put x and x tilde in our distance function d. Okay, and there we have it. This is the correct definition of a contraction. It's stronger than just saying that the distance gets smaller and smaller because we have a fixed scaling constant q here. And this is crucial because this is what guarantees us that we find a fixed point. Indeed, the result here is 
that we find a unique fixed point we can call x star. Now the notion fixed point for a map is not complicated at all, it just means that the map does not change this point. So if you put x star into phi, we get out x star again. So in the picture above, this will be a point that does not move when you apply the function phi. However, the claim here also tells us there is only one such point. So this is something to remember, the Banner fixed point theorem tells us about uniqueness and existence. Moreover, it also tells us how we can find this fixed point. Indeed, it gives us a construction procedure for every starting point x0. More precisely, it tells us put x0 into the map phi and then you get another point in the space x which you can put into phi again. And if you repeat this procedure n times, you have a whole sequence of numbers in x. And now the claim is that this sequence converges to our fixed point x star. And this works no matter which starting point x0 we choose. So this is definitely something we want to prove here. And indeed, it turns out that this is the best starting point for the proof. Simply because there we already have a sequence involved which we can examine. Which means now for the rest of the proof we simply fix the starting point x0. And then we define our sequence as xn. And as before, x1 means we apply phi once, x2 means we apply it twice, and so on. So in the end we can visualize that as a sequence in our set x. So we start with x0, then comes x1, x2, and so on, and now the question is, is this a sequence that is convergent in our space x. And since we have the completeness property of the metric space, we can also ask if this sequence xn is a Cauchy sequence. Indeed, in order to check for a Cauchy sequence, we don't need to know the limit first. So this makes everything much easier, because we just have to check the distance between two members. And maybe let's start the calculation for two neighbors. So let's write xn plus 1 and xn. Or in other words, what happens if we apply the map phi once? And in fact, we can just go one step down here, because xn plus 1 is simply phi of xn. And similarly, we have that xn is simply phi of xn minus 1. And with that, we now have the map phi in the distance function, and we can use the property of the contraction. Hence, we get an inequality with the constant q involved. More concretely, we have q times the distance between xn and xn minus 1. And now you should see, here on the right hand side, we can do the same step with the map phi again. The only difference now is that we have the factor q in front and the index is one smaller. So in the first component here we have xn minus 1 and in the second now xn minus 2. And now again we can use the property of the contraction. Which means we have less or equal and then q times q. So we have q squared times the distance. And there the index is by 1 reduced so we have xn minus 1 and xn minus 2 again. And now you should see we can repeat this whole calculation as often as we need it. And then in the last step what we get is q to the power n times the distance between x1 and x0. And as you might already know, these dots here just represent a formal proof by induction. In other words, now we have a very nice formula which holds for every n in n. And the result is that we have an estimate for the distance of two neighboring members. This is very nice, but not good enough to show that the whole sequence is a Cauchy sequence. There we need to know all possible distances between all members. So for example, if we pick an index m here and an index n there, we need to know the distance between xn and xm. So indeed, this here is the distance we want. However, at this point we only know distances between neighbors. 
and there you should already see the idea, we can just measure the distance we get by this detour and then we know by the triangle inequality that this distance is longer or equal than the distance we want. So more formally we can write that for two indices n and m where n is greater than m, we want to have an estimate for d of xn with xm. And now we simply use the triangle inequality to go the detour. Indeed we use it many times, namely for all the neighbors in between. So first we go xn to xn minus 1, then we go from xn minus 1 to xn minus 2 and measure the distance there. And then you should already see this continues until we reach our point m. So the last one here in the row would be going from xm plus 1 to xm. So the whole idea here is really simple, we just go step by step. And now the good thing is, for each entry here, we can use the formula from above. So for example, the first one here has the index n and n minus 1, which means the index, the power of q is n minus 1. And then you already see, the second one is one smaller, so we have q to the power n minus 2 there. And again, this simply continues until we have our last neighbors there. And in fact, there it's easy to see, we simply have q to the power m. And please don't forget, every part here also has the factor d of x1 and x0. Hence, we can just put parentheses and multiply with this factor. And there you see, this is already a nice formula for the distance between two members. And now since m is the smallest power we have here, we can also pull out q to the power m. This means here we just have to reduce all the powers by m. And now obviously it might be easier to write this with a sum symbol. So there we can say we go from k is equal to 0 to n minus 1 minus m. And then we simply have q to the power k here. And now you should see we hit all the terms and we have a geometric sum here. And now since our q here is between 0 and 1, we know that the whole sum here can be estimated by the series. More precisely, we don't get smaller if we sum up more elements. And there we can use the famous formula, the closed form for the geometric series. Which you might know is just 1 divided by 1 minus q. If you don't know that, please watch my real analysis course. Ok, and now you see, we can combine everything and we get a nice formula for the distance between xn and xm. Namely, it's bounded by above by the constant q to the power m, divided by 1 minus q and multiplied by the distance of the first two neighbors. And that's it, and we already see this one here gets very small if m gets big, simply because q is strictly less than 1. And indeed, this already shows that our sequence xn is a Cauchy sequence. If you don't see it immediately, please check the definition for a Cauchy sequence and choose a fixed epsilon and then try to find a good index capital N by using this formula. However, to be more quick, we can just say this is a Cauchy sequence simply because this distance goes to zero when n and m tend to infinity. This is simply the fast way to describe a Cauchy sequence. Ok, but with that we have it, because we know the space x is complete. And the completeness tells us that every Cauchy sequence is a convergent sequence. Which means that our sequence xn has a limit which is always unique and we can call it x star. And now the only thing that remains to check is that this x star is a fixed point for phi and also the only one. However, this now is really quick because we just have to put the point into the map phi. And there we can just rewrite x star as the limit of the sequence. And there we can also use something we have learned in the real analysis course. Namely, for continuous functions we can pull out the limit. And in fact, continuity for metric spaces is defined exactly in the same way as for real numbers. 
So for example, you could write down the epsilon delta criterion, where you measure the distances with the distance function d. Hence, the contraction property from above tells us that phi is indeed a continuous function. Hence, you can remember every contraction is also a continuous function. And then it's allowed to pull out the limit from the map. And then what we get is the limit of a new sequence given by phi of xn. However, this one is simply xn plus 1. So essentially the same sequence just shifted by one index. And obviously this cannot change the limit, we still get out x star here. And there we have it, x star is definitely a fixed point for the map phi. And now in order to end this proof, we just have to show that there is no second one. And there I would say, let's prove this in general. Let's assume we have a map phi with the property that we have a number q such that this inequality is always satisfied. And in addition, we say we have two fixed points, x star and x hat. And now we can see what happens if we assume that x star is unequal to x hat then this implies that we can calculate the distance between both points. In particular, it's a number that is not equal to zero. However, since we have fixed points, we can also substitute that with the images of phi. So we have the distance between phi of x star and phi of x hat. And now by the assumption for the map phi, we know that we can estimate this with this factor q. So in other words, it's simply less or equal than q times times the same distance as before. And by assumption, this is a positive number, so we can just divide both sides by it. And now this division tells us that we have 1 is less or equal than q. So in conclusion, having two fixed points implies that we don't have a contraction. Hence, by using our logical contraposition, we can say if we know that q is less than 1, it implies that the two fixed points are the same. And there you see, this shows our uniqueness. Okay, and there we have it. This is the whole proof of the Banach fixed point theorem. And as already mentioned, if you want to see some applications of it, you can watch my other videos. So I really hope you meet there and have a nice day. Bye bye.